Well hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now before I paint uh, a picture today, I just want to show you how um, I actually put my paper down onto my board. Quite often people ask me, uh, are you, have you taped it all the way round? How do you actually put that down onto your board? And I'm going to show you. Well, the first thing you need is a board like this. It could be smaller than this, it could be larger than this, um, but this is the size that I would put my half imperial sheet of paper um, attached to. And you need masking tape. And the first thing you do, you take your card or board or paper and attach that to your board. Now, this is the key attach it as square as you can and just catch it in the four corners with a small piece of tape that's all you need to do for that to secure it to the board so it doesn't actually move next you take your masking tape and you if you notice i'm putting it on the inside of my paper and I'm not attaching it to the board so that is quite um, quite important because if you notice look, it's still not attached to the board that way when you damp the paper the paper can expand and contract in its own way it's only held by those um, four corners and you continue that all the way around just taping as far as the outer edge only, like that. Making certain that's, I like to keep it even on the edges, purely um, so that when you take it off, it's nice and even all the way around. Yeah, if ever it does get mounted and framed, you can actually mount it with the edge, with the white paper actually showing if it's a neat edge so that's the reason i like to keep it fairly even and then you complete this edge and when you come to this edge pull the tape back and just tuck the tape back on itself then tape into that area and the key to this is when you remove it this is the reason i do this Okay, then you pull that back on there and you've got somewhere to get hold of the, the tape and um, when you want to tear it off you just go all the way around because everyone is overlapping each other apart from this one that you can actually um, start removing the, uh, the, the part of the tape that you can start removing. And now we are fully re ready um, to paint our picture. Well, now we have the paper on the board. Um, I'd like to show you a very quick uh, demonstration for painting a tree, a large tree, in a landscape with water reflection. Now, it's only going to be a simple version, uh, very simply painted, but I think it gives you some ideas how loose you can be when you actually come to paint. So um, let's get started. Well, the first thing we're going to do is to put down our drawing. And it's quite simple, really. Nothing too uh, complicated about this. Um, we're going to have, uh, where are we going to have the large tree? Let's have the river that comes possibly from there. And it quickly turns gradually you've got to keep this river flat when you have these angles you've got to keep the river flat so it turns there there is a bank there and then it sweeps so it's almost as if we're sitting on the river really I'm going to have a large tree there so we'll just basically draw in the trunk it's going to be a summer tree 
so it's going to have plenty of leafing because it's vital that we achieve that it's going to go slightly out of picture it's going to hang down a little bit like that um, then here we're going to have just coming in this picture we're going to have a small building with a red tile roofing like that there we are and it's sitting on the edge of this river and then here we're going to have some hedging that runs up to the um, the tree really it's going to be quite an old building it's going to have a a door there it's going to have a window there and then the distance we're going to have a bit of distance there well into the distant field and then we're going to have a little bit of fencing and then we're going to have some uh, quite simple trees and uh, fields beyond that now I'm going to, uh, to use a large mop brush um, and that's a number eight pro art um, mop brush synthetic but it does point now if you had a smaller piece of paper than this you could use a smaller brush than that uh, I'm going to use an old number 10 sorry number 12 as you can see the point has gone um, um, so it's an old brush never discard your old brushes always come in handy and then I'm going to use a rigger for the fine detail so those are the three brushes I'm going to use first thing I'm going to do is to thoroughly damp the paper with the large mop brush now this board that I've got here actually lifts up and I can slant it so I can control the amount of water that I have um, soaking in or running down so I'm going to lift the board just at about a 15 20 degree angle and drop in water with this very large brush don't be afraid to use large brushes they can be a bit daunting when you're um, working um, you know when you're new to painting um, but I oh know I must admit it took me a long while before I uh, used a brush of this size uh, on this even this size of paper but um, you know it's um, I find them you know as you the more you get used to laying on colour and washes then um, the easier it becomes so you can see I've damped that paper thoroughly I'm allowing that to soak in while I mix I'm actually going to put in raw sienna into the sky so it's just a pure medium to light tone of raw sienna and the sky I'm looking to achieve is going to be quite dramatic one or two little lighter pieces uh, uh, areas of white left now into that I'm going to add a little bit of olizarin crimson here and there there we are Look at that. a little bit stronger now the light I'm having coming from the left hand side that's why I've left that lighter so it's going to be a little darker here so I'm hoping for a little bit of drama now I'm going to clean the brush again and I'm going to use cobalt blue as my blue and I'm going to have a patch of blue there another patch of blue there and just allow the paint see how that paint is running down just about to catch that I think see the way that, that paint and behind the tree is going to I'm painting over the tree 
not going to be um, part of the um, you know I'm not painting around the leaf areas I always paint over if the leaf areas are much darker which they will be and make your blue patches smaller as they go away into the distance just removing some colour so I can lift off the paint along the bottom edge like that there you go good so that's working quite well now I need just a little bit of punch so I'm putting in a fairly strong mix of Windsor Blue because I need a strong mix of Windsor, Windsor there while it's still damp and a strong mix of Windsor there because these then will shape up the clouds see it's what you leave that will be the cloud shapes a little bit behind the tree not too dark behind the tree roll the roll the brush across the paper there we are look at that and then as you come down yet again smaller feelings of uh, cloud work and a bit of warmth in the distance then clean the brush thoroughly dry it onto a piece of kitchen towel or something then use the brush to mop away any clouds you need white so there you go I'm mopping away a white cloud there and I'm going to have a white cloud there there's lovely warmth in that lower part of the cloud and I'm lifting that off clean the brush again get some lovely sweeping um, movement just going to put a small cloud in the distance just to take away that run or oh, there's a small cloud there there we are and then what you do you allow that to dry so I'm going to hold that board at that angle I'm just using a damp brush just to mop away the distance but other than that I'm going to be happy with that I'm going to leave that as it is and I'm going to leave the cloud work as it is and once we pull the board down at a more upright angle you'll be able to see exactly how it dries up next comes the distance now it's still a little damp as you can see I'll put the board at a, at a more um, upright angle you probably in reality leave it lying down but can you see the lovely um, soft cloud work that will sit back into the distance now what I'm going to do just before I go any further I'm going to use that raw sienna like that and I'm going to sweep across the land in the distance like that so that's the distant feel allowing that damp paper to come into that area so that's the distance so you've got to get a soft edge because it's damp then I'm adding cadmium yellow to that as my yellow for the grass bit more cadmium yellow into that same colour and it's actually got a little blue in there so that's useful it comes up a slightly green but it doesn't matter you know if it's a little bit on the uh, yellow side that's exactly what I'm looking for okay and a little more water a little more cadmium dig in there nicely and get the stronger green in the foreground can you see the way we've produced the feeling of um, grass coming towards us so nice in the distance very distant area lovely that's excellent right now I'm going to mop the brush take some paint off uh, some water off the brush and I'm going to go in with quite a strong mix of 
um, just a touch of water. I'm going in where I've had the cobalt blue. I'm going in. Notice how I haven't got a lot of paint on the, a lot of water on the brush. I'm going in with a little light red into that and a little blue while it's still damp. Let's see what we get, shall we? Oh, there you go. Look at that. It's a lovely color for distant hedging and trees go over that um, area there and can you see the way that's blurring into the distance and I'm going to have a field in here or, or of a bit of a hill so all you do is just sweep that across and you bring that down like that there we are and that will be nice and soft against the background sky let's go a little higher than that give it a bit of movement there we go look at that and that's our distant hill really good and why not have another one here there we are there's a bit more of a bob ross here i'm making it up as i go along really um which you can do there we are there's another hill the other side just before that bank dries, hopefully, I've picked up a little burnt sienna. And I'm just going to, well, actually, it is dry, so it's not a problem. And I'm going to just touch along the edge. Just because quite often you have um, some bank areas that, that, are, that you can't sort of, that, has a, that wouldn't have grass because they're too close to the water's edge. So that's that's a good idea to pull a little bit of that in like that. Semi-dry brush. You know, it's all impressionist. Not getting too um, bogged down with detail. So that's our riverbank. Now I've taken some of the moisture off the brush because you can see how it's running into that distant field. I don't want that. So I'm just lifting away there with a damp brush. So I don't get too much run down. Okay. Then while I still, while that brush is still damp, I'm going to use the Windsor Blue with the light red. So as I say, Windsor Blue this time, not Cobalt. Because very little water, I can pick up a bit of that water. Uh, pick up a bit of water from other parts of your palette if, if you don't want too much because with these large brushes you can soon overload them because I want to have Windsor Blue, yeah, giving me a stronger colour. I want to have some quite strong trees and hedging here just before that dries so we can get a, a nice bit of feeling of a wooded area shape the brush like that bring that up a bit higher than that there we are just gives that impression that there's perhaps a wooded area or something in the distance you don't actually show everything that's the thing with watercolor painting you don't paint everything in you allow lots for the imagination Next will come, I'm going to have a red tile roof. So I'm going to use light red with a touch of alizarin crimson just to knock it back just a touch. But it's um, going to be quite, quite a nice, not too rich red because I don't want that to overpower the picture. But just sweep that on nice and carefully. There we go. Use the point like that and the edge the overhanging tile there look at that nothing more simpler than that really no now the wall of the um, barn that's going to be like a stone color so I'm going to use raw sienna cobalt blue with a touch of light red here we are, so it's a, like a grey, like a brownie grey. Fairly light for this. And I'm going to put in 
both edges, the shadow side as well as the sunlit side. Just stroking that in yet again. It's only a, an old barn, so it doesn't want to be uh, too fussy. Now comes the large summer tree in full leaf. Now, how do you paint a large tree like uh, a real bold tree, um, oak, ash, elm, that type of thing, I suppose? Um, well, all you do, you need a nice yellow. So you could use lemon yellow, um, but I'm using um, cadmium yellow. And you would, let's use lemon yellow. There we go. Look at that. That'll bring it nice and fresh. Or as fresh as we can get it. A little bit of the Windsor Blue. Plenty of yellow to start. Now the sunlight is coming from the left. So, and all you do, even with a large brush, you just... The top of the tree will be open like that. So you use the point of the brush for the outside edges. Plenty of gaps at the top. It's actually going to run out of picture. So there we are. And occasionally have a branch that really hangs out like that. A little bit there. Leave some gaps here and there because you know it's not all um, leafing a little more water going in and a bit more blue this time with the yellow and I'm going to add a bit of burnt sienna to the mix as well because that will give me a little bit more earthy green and just be careful but it's all sort of relative at the moment the the amount of dark colour you put in. But can you see the way I'm getting the impression of branches without the need to paint everyone in? And that's the key to a good tree. It's just purely an impression. And the way these trees hang down in the lower area, I love that in these old large trees. Now we go more blue and more brown burnt sienna and this is where we get the dark color and start on the undersides of these branches like that particularly in the lower area put a bit more blue in there because I like to see a bit of blue green there we go and then some we've got a little bit of overhang shadow or there's a little dark area there Nice to have the odd dark here and there. And the good thing about these brushes, you can use the point to create the, um, the smaller details. See the way I'm, I can put a, a long br um, um, brush stroke, broad brush stroke, but I can also put in the smaller little leafing branches that come away. Look at that. Bit more blue bit more brown cool that's nice really dark now into this lower area and the way it overhangs into the there we are so you can imagine if you're in a landscape environment outside you could capture this sort of scene pretty quickly really there we are the actual fact, I'm going to darken broader areas this side, but too, too much light, I felt, onto the right hand side. Nice to be dark, don't to over, don't to take too much of the dark colour away, but it's nice to be nice and uh, dark enough. Then more brown and a real punch of blue look how dark that is very strong color and this goes in in a minimal way because the darker you get the, the less color you need on the paper there we are and that's the way 
you give an impression of a large tree fairly quickly in leaf. All we need now is the trunk and all you do you add more brown so a nice strong brown and you go down like that broad trunk and I'm just leaving white paper well it's not white paper it's unpainted area and then we have trunk sits on to into the ground there we are and I'm just leaving a tat lighter color showing where the sun is catching the left hand side then I'm going up the tree now we may see the trunk again there just remember it's got to be relevant to the size of the tree and you may see the trunk again there don't want to see too much of this trunk but then it splits and it gets smaller we may have an, an area there notice I'm painting this all with this brush and you'd be surprised you can get away with an awful lot put a bit of blue in there just to cover that don't want too much of that trunk showing a bit more brown now and I will put in the smaller branches with the rigger very shortly there you go now all I do into that I add more yellow and considerable more yellow it's all getting rather messy but we're not worried about that because I want to put in this bit of hedging now see the way I'm dabbing that on it, it really is an impressionist style I'm trying to um, show you here uh, always important to try and learn impressionism um, gonna put in dark little punch there underneath the, uh, the fencing good now I'm going to use the fine rigger to finish off the trunk work um, oh and I've got windows to go in um, I forgot about windows let's use the large brush again just for windows show you how to do windows um, add a bit more brush um, let's go cobalt with um, light red could be burnt here we are burnt umber let's use burnt umber and cobalt blue there we are anything any dark brown really and all you do you just stroke across the top and pull down is the door and there's the window and sometimes they have a little window at the top there we are well next will come the more finer detail and I'm going to use burnt sienna again not too much of the blue this time quite a bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to paint down the right hand side and any sort of detailing that that I feel is required there any branches that sort of would come away are still slightly damp and that can be an advantage um, that's it there's a branch that runs up there that one runs up there and you just make it up as you go along basically I think we're going to have a branch breaking out of the tree work there perhaps another one there um, don't put too many branches in because it can be quite a um, quite a dangerous thing to do you end up uh, getting bogged down with all the branches and you think hmm can't see the leaf for the branches so it's um, always nice 
we just flick them in just it's impressionist again then very small little branches here and there sufficient and while we have this brown let's just uh, put in this this old bit of fencing it's heading down probably to keep the cattle or in from there we are an old piece of fencing and I'm going to put a bit of blue with that now because I want to show up a bit of the old window frame on this building and the door and the window there good that's pretty much there really oh um, occasionally we'll have a little bit of twig work coming through uh, here and there on that uh, nice when you get a nice rigger it's a rigger brush because apparently it was used for doing rigging on the um, on the boats you know the, the rigging um, of the boats the sails and the masts and rigging and what have you there we are now a good mix for um, shadows is ultramarine and Indian red use it a lot on snow shadows not too much Indian red I want it to be a, a bluey color and although it looks very dark put plenty of water with it I'm using the smaller brush now the the number 12 it doesn't point and let's go in with um, a shadow down that building there like that under the overhang of the roof down the left hand side across the top of the window and all of a sudden we've got a lovely funnel of sunlight coming from the left now that's cast across the front and up that area there see the way you've justified that shadow um, with with that uh, with that color there with the building justified the building shadow with the uh, color that's um, on the edge there just going to lift that off a little bit don't want that to be too there we go look at that look at that bit of squiggle Isn't that lovely then I'm going to do the same this side down the left hand side the right hand side of the trunk a little bit in the inside still damp that's nice and then of course there would be some shadow on the grass there and I'm just weakening that now and spreading that up into that area there and it would run quite considerably across this up the bank like that and across like that it would open up a touch because there would be some gaps and then we get the odd touch of dark here and there particularly on the inside I'd like to see a bit of gapping in that in that hedge but other than that not too much don't just uh, don't show too much allow the um, the eye um, or the viewer to decide what's going on there and then a little bit um, coming from a tree out of picture right so that could very well be up that building and across like that it just gives that building a bit of interest see the way I'm laying that shadow down on the bank look at that leaving plenty of what of unpainted paper um, just to give that a bit of atmosphere then along the bank edge we can go a little darker with this shortly 
but basically along that bank edge not as much this side because it's all in sunlight but there will be little bits and pieces of shadow that we can see and particularly along the edge at the back there but that has to be very small because it's well into the distance now I'm going to add a little more, more red to that mix a little bit more of the Indian red not too much enough blue in there to make it feel distant and make it weaker because what I'm going to do I'm going to produce a tree that stands just to hold in that right hand side in the background there there we are and because I've made it a purpley colour it sits back behind a bit of hedging a bit of tree work something like that you can see it sitting back behind that um, uh, that clump of uh, foreground hedging and I'm going to do the same here just pull in finish neatly on top of there but overall similar sort of process because I want that just to, to show up coming in on that left hand side good now let's have a look at the water now a lot of people get a little bit um, worked up about water and um, to be fair uh, I suppose when you're learning it's not an easy thing to achieve but as always as I've done throughout this picture simplification keep it simple um, and what I'm going to do I'm going to use raw sienna I've got nowhere on the palette so I'm just cleaning that but I'm not too worried because you've got to remember old rivers are not particularly clean so they're quite um, quite muddy really so I'm going to use um, raw sienna right and a little bit of the Windsor blue not too much mainly raw sienna to give me a greeny gray and this is what I'm going to use to actually start the water off like that immediately it begins to look like water and I'm painting across the paper now I'm putting in a little bit of blue because we've got blue in the sky and we're going to have a little bit of sort of uh, what would you call it ah wind ruffling the surface there we are now a bit of cobalt now because there is a patch of cobalt there in the sky so let's pull that across there like that bit of cobalt there don't make it too rough because after all it's not um, we're not out in the seas here a um, bit more blue yeah we are a little bit more Prussian blue going in there oh, sorry um, winds of blue and keep it nice and flat like that right now we need the bank so all you do winds of blue and raw sienna again and we can catch that just before it dries well it has pretty much dried so I'm not too worried about that okay and then we have the bank I'm reflecting a little bit darker than the bank itself you see the way I'm reflecting that a little darker than the bank itself and I'm going across the paper like that see the way I'm pulling that across the paper a bit stronger as I come down into the foreground there and all of a sudden it begins to look a bit watery that's what I'm looking for really and then this large tree 
and that needs to be put in very simply so all we're using blue winds of blue a bit of raw sienna plenty of light in the sky so we don't want too much that's it let's pull across the paper and let's go just one tone darker to be a bit careful particularly there that's it yeah and then we're going to use the point of the brush just to ripple the outside edge there we are and then with the point of the brush we pull that across like that not too many ripples in the distance a little bit more in the foreground like that see the way we're getting that lovely feeling of reflection from that large tree and then I'm putting a bit of red because I want to give an impression of perhaps that building just about reflecting in that water but that's all I'm going to do for that so you don't do a reverse image of what you see it's a very blurred image it's a very suggestive feel and then just finally just before it completely dries burnt umber ultramarine really dark color just to pick up in places where that bank meets even where it's damp you can actually see the way it turns down pull a little bit down like that not too much in the distance got to be a bit careful there same there just got to be a little bit careful because if you add too much wouldn't put any right in the distance that's nice to lay back just a little there and then that bank potentially comes out there a little don't overpaint too much of that lovely brown that we've got in there um, because we need we need to show that but that's those little touches these are what I call finishing touches that really make all the difference Let's darken those off that's it there we go look at that little finishing touches that really make this picture um, what it is really just a little bit there where the hedge sits on the grass nice to just determine where these little edges there where that building sits on the grass one or two little touches in the roof um, that window needs to be determined again um, one or two little don't want that's nice and soft that I, I want that I want to leave that There we go look at that just a suggestion of an overhang there there we go lots of grasses here and there okay birds in the sky why do i always have to have birds in the sky well who knows but they're going in and they're going to be not too dark but blue blue gray and oh, we're going to have there like that like that we're going to have another smaller one there and perhaps another one there like that something a little larger there we are plenty of movement uh, perhaps a little couple there as well and we're going to call that a day now as I said at the beginning that area there you can pick off and peel away now when you peel the paper away the, the tape away peel away from the paper 
the painting because if it's still damp and it catches the paper it could tear it into it. It's nice to have a nice clean edge. There we are and that's all you need to do. I'll do that all the way around. Well there you have it. The surround has been taken away. Uh, it gives it a bit of a sort of a mounting effect and all I'm going to do now is to sign it in the paint I've used in the bottom right hand left hand corner and not too close to the corner just in case that needs to be mounted and in the signature that I've normally put in and I always do that doesn't matter you know what your standard whether you're just a leisure painter or whether you're f um, painting for an exhibition um, I would sign your work um, handy for you a future reference well I do hope you've enjoyed watching that um, how quite a simple subject it's a made-up subject uh, it's not uh, anywhere in particular although obviously around my um, when, when I'm out and about I um, uh, make little sketches of trees and buildings and rivers uh, so it's a combination of, of all of them really or some of them and um, but it's a nice exercise and demonstration how you can produce a soft sky wet into wet little patches of warm color there's also a soft distance uh, impression of um, uh, like fields and uh, hills in the distance that are very soft against a very light um, sky in the background typical summer you know sort of hazy summer day and then we've got a distant field one or two hints at distant trees then we've got this lovely foreground area lovely big old tree uh, that's the way you handle a big tree plenty of uh, um, uh, tones lights and darks plenty of gaps on the outside one or two in the middle where you can put your branches in and um, a little building just coming in onto the left nothing too fussy don't want to attract the eye from the main large tree that's why I didn't put too much red into the um, uh, the tile work on the top lovely bit of shadow that highlights the light field in the distance plenty of shadow there a bit of foreground shadow and of course there again keeping the reflection simple no reverse image of the tree never looks right simple wet into wet uh, just scratching the brush across the paper leaving little flecks of white little ripple marks um, all together um, I think it came off uh, quite well well I hope you've enjoyed watching if you have as always click on the link bottom right hand corner and thank you for watching and we'll see you all again very very soon bye for now